Last night, I finished the 38th and last novel of the Ace Science Fiction Specials Series 1. In approximately seven months, I read the 38 books in chronological order. I have some thoughts and observations. Ten observations, in fact. The last one will be a ranking of the top three novels that I enjoyed from the series. Then I'll conclude with some future reading plans. So let's talk Ace Specials. Yesterday, I finished reading the last novel in the Ace Science Fiction Specials Series 1. That's the 38 novels that you see before you here. These three were reprints from these novels. And these eight over here, I call the Apocrypha to the Canon. Terry Carr was the editor of the Ace Science Fiction Specials Series 1. These eight books that you see in front of you here were purchased by Terry Carr for the Ace Science Fiction Specials, but he left the company. And so these eight, for contract reasons or otherwise, didn't get the Ace Science Fiction Special moniker on the top. Once contractual things were figured out, then they were published. And you can see one of them has a Leo and Diane Dillon cover on it. In this overview, I'll have some comments and some observations. I'll also let you know about my favorite authors and books. So let's get started. Observation number one. The first 12 books have a certain livery. There's two squares, one with a geometric design in the top, and then one with the artwork from Leo and Diane Dillon in the bottom square. Starting with the 13th book, Isle of the Dead by Roger Zelazny, we have Leo and Diane Dillon's art full page with a title and a banner across the top. That happens for 26 novels. Observation number two, Leo and Diane Dillon did the cover art for 35 of the 38 novels. The three which they didn't do had art by Davis Meltzer. That's Humanity Prime, The Warlord of the Air, and The Midnight Dancers. In the Apocryphal Eight, we have a variety of artists. Leo and Diane Dillon did the art for Barefoot in the Head. Due to some publishing contract concerns actually here in Canada, that book just never made it into the Ace Science Fiction Specials, but it was intended to be in there with the Leo and Diane Dillon covers. Observation number three. Four of these books were reprinted. There was Rite of Passage by Alexi Panchin. It won a Nebula Award. The very first novel, Clifford D. Simic, Why Call Him Back from Heaven. Both of these, we can see the Leo and Diane Dillon artwork a little bit better. And also James H. Schmidt's The Witches of Cars. The fourth reprint is a reprint of The Left Hand of Darkness by Ursula K. Le Guin. It has a badge like this one here saying the Nebula and Hugo Award winner. Observation number four of the 38 Ace Science Fiction Special Series 1, 37 of them were copyrighted between 1966 and 1971. The only one that was earlier than that was Wilson Tucker, The Lincoln Hunters from 1958. Thus, this series gives an interesting snapshot of science fiction from the years 1966 to 1971. This is a time when Michael Moorcock had taken over New Worlds magazine in the UK and the new wave was born. There were some American equivalents, but you see here a mix of both US and UK authors. Observation number five. Of the last five novels published, four of them were first novels. This seems to be a precursor of Terry Carr, the editor of the series, coming back to do series three of the Ace Science Fiction Specials and publishing 12 first novels in the 1980s. Observation number six. Terry Carr has a number of authors that have more than one book in the series. There are three authors that have three books within the series. R.A. Lafferty has three books in the series, Past Master, Fourth Mansions, and the collection of short stories, 900 Grandmothers. James A. Smith has two novels, The Witches of Cars and The Demon Breed. Wilson Tucker as well has two novels, in fact, two time travel novels, The Lincoln Hunters and The Year of the Quiet Sun. Joanna Russ has two novels, 
first her debut novel, Picnic on Paradise, and, and Chaos Died. Bob Shaw has three novels in the series and one in the apocryphal series. We have The Two Timers, The Palace of Eternity, One Million Tomorrows, and Other Days, Other Eyes. Ursula K. Le Guin has two books in the series, The Left Hand of Darkness and A Wizard of Earthsea. Avram Davidson has two books, The Island Under the Earth and The Phoenix and the Mirror. D.G. Compton ties Bob Shaw with three books in the series and one in the Apocryphal Eight. We have The Silent Multitude, The Steel Crocodile, Chronicles, and The Missionary. Michael Moorcock has two books in the series, The Black Corridor and The Warlord of the Air. John Brunner has two books in the series. He has The Jagged Orbit and The Traveler in Black. Gordon Eklund would have had two books in the series if these eight had been published as a science fiction specials. He had the last one, The Eclipse of Dawn, and he also had a trace of dreams. Observation number seven. Two authors started off with a science fiction novel and then followed up with a fantasy novel in the series. We had Ursula K. Le Guin with The Left Hand of Darkness and A Wizard of Earthsea. Now, A Wizard of Earthsea was actually copyright before The Left Hand of Darkness. So in order of writing, a Wizard of Earthsea was written first, and then second was written The Left Hand of Darkness. Quite a one-two punch of literature. And the second author was John Brenner. The science fiction novel The Jagged Orbit, and the fantasy fix-up novel The Traveler in Black. It's four novellas stitched together. Observation number eight. There are two collections of short stories, a third if you look at the Apocryphal Eight. There's The Preserving Machine by Philip K. Dick, 900 Grandmothers by R.A. Lafferty, and the last one that would have been printed is The Worlds of Theodore Sturgeon. Observation number nine. Some of the highlights of the series for me were James H. Schmitz, The Witches of Cars, The Revolving Boy by Gertrude Friedberg, Rite of Passage by Alexei Panshin, Syntha Joy by D.G. Compton, The Demon Breed by James H. Schmitz, Isle of the Dead by Roger Zelazny, The Jagged Orbit by John Brunner, The Left Hand of Darkness by Ursula K. Le Guin, The Silent Multitude by D.G. Compton, The Palace of Eternity by Bob Shaw, Pavan by Keith Roberts, The Black Corridor by Michael Moorcock, 900 Grandmothers by R.A. Lafferty, A Wizard of Earthsea by Ursula K. Le Guin. Observation number 10. My top three novels in the series with an honorable mention to one that I've read from the Apocryphal Eight. My third most favorite novel, The Palace of Eternity by Bob Shaw. My second favorite novel, A Wizard of Earthsea by Ursula K. Le Guin. This is a bit of a surprise to me as I normally don't read fantasy. And the top novel in the A Science Fiction Specials Series 1 for me is The Left Hand of Darkness by Ursula K. Le Guin. From the Apocryphal Eight, I've read two of them, but one stands out and really can stand with these three as well. And that's Other Days, Other Eyes by Bob Shaw. So you can see my favorites are dominated by Ursula K. Le Guin and Bob Shaw. Future reading plans include reading the Apocryphal Eight, then going on to series two of the A Science Fiction Specials from the 1970s. There are 11 books. 
and then series three of the A Science Fiction Specials from the 1980s. As I collected and read through this series, I documented it in videos. I have a playlist on my channel where you can access this story. They are listed chronologically from the newest to the oldest. So if you scroll down, you can see where I started to collect the series and where I started reading the series chronologically. So now to you. Do you have any thoughts about these books that I've been reading as I took a journey through the Ace Science Fiction Special Series 1? What are your favorite books? Any thoughts or observations you wish to note? Thanks for joining me on this journey. Until next time, keep reading.